Charles de Gaulle, the grandeur of France, and a grinding six-year war in Algeria. All Algeria is divided into three forces, the Muslim natives, the French settlers, the French army. Over these, de Gaulle, hero of World War II. His job, balancing the forces, restoring peace. Against him, General Raoul Salon, a waverer. Paratroop General Jacques Massou. Jacques Soustel, once de Gaulle's lieutenant. Pierre Lagayard, an extremist. Berhard Abbas, FLN leader. Charles de Gaulle. And the six-year Algerian war. Algiers, a busy piece of metropolitan France transplanted across the Mediterranean. Frenchmen have lived and ruled here since 1830. More than one million Frenchmen in Algiers rub elbows with more than 10 million Muslims. Man on horseback, symbol of France, stands in Algiers' main square. On the surface, Muslim and Frenchmen live well together. They shop in the same stores. Street cafes on a quiet afternoon. Even a milk bar. The Casbah, the Muslim Quarter, locale of a thousand adventure stories. A part of the non-French past. The beaches of Algeria are just across the Mediterranean from the Riviera. The bathing suits are just as brief. The lovers just as tanned. Algiers is wild and wicked and gay and naughty. The European there always saw something wild and exotic about the southern shore of the Mediterranean. At least until the night of November 1st, 1954, when the Algerian revolt against France began. Algerian Muslims took to the hills under the banner of a new organization, the FLN. They launched attacks on the French. French patrols in the back country were ambushed. derailed. Rebels smashed the villages of Muslims who opposed the FLN. Terror spread throughout Algeria. This was a nightclub, a time bomb wrecked it. The rebels in the field depended for their supplies on money raised from Algerians working in France. And so terror spread to the streets of Paris. Even late in the war, two Muslims a day died in France as collectors exacted contributions. In Algeria, Muslims divided over whether Algeria should remain French. This village opposed the FLN. In the Casbah, where several rebel groups vied for support, a secret ammunition dump exploded. At the peak of its strength in 1958, the FLN fielded an army of approximately 20,000 men. It ruled the Oris Mountains, and it enforced its decisions. For six years, blood ran. French settlers and French troops killed in the field, killed in ambush. The youth of France, the best families. The pretender to the throne of France watched his son buried with full military honors. No honors at all for Muslim victims of the FLN. 300 men and boys killed in one Algerian village. They supported the MNA, another Algerian independence movement. Then the major combat strength of the French army was thrown into Algeria. 400,000 men with all the weapons of modern war. The army had guns and planes and tanks, but it rarely had anyone to fight. It hunted fleas on a bearskin rug with a baseball bat. 
More often than not, French troops arrived at a village only after the rebels had left it smoking. As the French troops moved up from one side, the rebels moved out the other. Finally, the French took drastic measures. The rebels had the backing of many fellow Muslims. They moved unnoticed in the midst of the civilian population. So the French moved the civilian population. Whole villages were rounded up and transported to camps where the French army could better supervise them. A strange war. Rebels showed their power in the cities by ordering general strikes. Muslims were ordered not to work. Hasba shops were shut tight. So the French army opened them for business. But in the last two years of the long struggle, the tide turned. Saturation offensives by the French cut the power of the rebel National Liberation Army. Many rebels were captured or gave up. Their morale fell. Those forces still in the mountains scattered into bands no larger than platoons. The war went on. Rebel dead, 150,000. Civilian dead, the same number. French losses, 10,000 men. Even on a relatively calm day, more than 25 men died in Algeria fighting on one side or the other or just getting caught in the crossfire. Algiers itself, the third force was felt. In 1956, the French settlers attacked Guy Mollet, premier of France, when he laid a wreath at the monument to Algerian war dead. They feared Mollet would negotiate a peace with the rebels that would cost them all they had. They called him a traitor. Then it became apparent that governments of France were made and unmade in the streets of Algiers. One politician after another was found wanting. And when Pierre Flamelin was named premier, Algeria broke into open revolt. The settlers defied the Paris government and called for Charles de Gaulle to assume power. On May 13, 1958, the settlers marched on government house in Algiers. It was then that the army under Salon's leadership wavered. After first resisting, it withdrew and let the settlers have their day. The Air Force flew the Gaulle's Cross of Lorraine. Jacques Soustel assumed leadership of the uprising. Vive Soustel. He was joined by Salon, who had now gone completely over to the settlers. They set up the Committee of Public Safety, which would rule Algiers until de Gaulle came to power. Aligned with them was the paratroop hero Jacques Massou. De Gaulle, de Gaulle, shouted the crowd, Algeria is French. De Gaulle to power, de Gaulle to power. The same cry rang out in Paris. Right-wing elements marched down the Champs-Élysées, demanding that de Gaulle be called to the capital. For days, the National Assembly searched for a new leader, someone besides de Gaulle. And for days and nights, the marchers demonstrated. The marchers marched, deputies searched, and the police cracked heads. On June 